This is the true story, true story of one DJ chosen by his fans to travel the world and make music. This is laid back, Luke. Find out what happens when DJs stop being DJs and start getting real. The real world DJ edition. I'm very lucky I get to travel to these kind of places. The travel was long though. I flew New York, Toronto to here on a quite a, an older airline, but it's all good. Uh, this means I'll just need to catch up on some sleep right now. I'm really happy I'm in my room and found a nice bed. Good news because I've been doing so much Portugal this summer, I will give you a little producer tutorial on this vlog right now. Okay, so that was a good sleep. It's always good to catch up. So when I checked in, uh, they didn't have my suite ready, so they put me in a regular room, which is great, you know, as long as I have a bed. So I'm changing rooms, and then I'll probably get to work out straight away. Autographing for my daughter? Yes, for sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. I was a little over Ah, that's <laughs> awesome. This is her daughter. Boom, so now I got a new room without a bed. I'm only kidding though, because apparently this is the living room section and then this is the bedroom section right here. I will just need to see where I'll record the producer session, but first, it's a workout. So I'm back in the room, I updated Gina, and I just ordered some delicious room service. Now let me quickly take a shower, and then I'll take you through some awesome production tips. Okay, and so by the way, if you don't know anything about producing, feel free to skip ahead, because I'm gonna get real technical right now. So one of the most common questions I get is, how do I balance out the bass and the kick drum? And I'll just show you, and I'll show you some compressor settings as well. Side chaining is a very important thing, uh, when it comes to kick drum and bass. So what I usually have is I have a ghost kick drum running along the track. So as you can see it has no output. Uh, so it's really just the, the signal that gives the sidechain pump. If you don't know about sidechain compression, uh, go and look it up, Google it. I have a new track right here. It's uh, a track from my upcoming album. I won't tell you the title yet. <laughs> So I don't even have it coming in from my ghost kick, I have it coming in from the kick. If you use the ghost kick, so whenever the kick drum leaves, you'll always get the pumping effect still going on, like here. But if you sidechain it on the actual kick, then when the kick goes, suddenly the bass line becomes really open. And when you take out the kick drum on the four, take it out for a whole bar, where suddenly the bass opens up and then it chucks in again. My tactic for determining the right compressor settings, just put the threshold extremely low. Like, yeah, like here, minus 29 dB. So this magnifies out all the settings you can tweak. So right now, if I tweak the release here, you can instantly hear the difference. The pump should be timed with kind of like the hi-hat. So this is about the right setting. Let's check out the ratio. Now it's pretty much off. And now it has a good effect. Remember the threshold is still way down. So I want to ease off on the threshold because now I have the right pump, but now I want it a little bit less. So now it basically has the same effect, but it's more subtle. So because of the pump, you create space for the kick drum to be there as well, so both can be equally loud. Now it's very important as well to EQ right, so the kick drum actually lives if you create a peak like that and just scroll over the spectrum you can really find out where it hits, so here 50 Hertz lives in the 50 Hertz, so anyway it lives there, so this means your bass line can't live there, think about it this is 15 decibels, this is an insane peak, so you always want to 2, 3, 4 dB is more than enough. This is just a way to find out where stuff sits, and then you can tweak it subtly. What's always good is to roll off a little bit of low end, 
So, you know, the, the subest of the sub is 44 hertz. You can go up to 40 hertz, you can go up to 50 hertz. And this just means there's less mud in the low ends, and this will give you more volume in the master volume in the end. So I'll just briefly dive into the layers, because there's a bunch of them over here. Basically, you, you should see music and, a, and you know, a track as like a, a puzzle piece. And every little piece fits together. Like I said with the kick drum, it lives in the 50 hertz region, so that means your bass line shouldn't have that. And so both of them fit together. Same works with layering. The key for you young producers is to recognize what you are missing. So for instance, if my bass line would only be this, I would say I'm missing some sub, and I would say I'm missing some higher frequencies. Then I'll just go through presets. And so add that. Maybe I need a more uh, mid-low type of bass. This is mid, this is high, this is low, mid-low. Mid-low, this is a perfect sound for that. And all of a sudden it fills it up, you know. And you can't hear it over the speakers right now, but I'm missing the real bottom end. So that's probably why I put the deep bass in there. And then if you compress it right, and you EQ it right, then it'll fit with the kick drum, and it'll sound solid. I have way more in store for you. We can discuss mastering, we can discuss reverb, echoes, chorus, how to... Uh, compress vocals, anything you want, just leave it in the comments and I'll look at it and I'll pick it up for next time here in the vlogs. Hope this helped you a little bit and if you have any questions, don't hesitate. You can always contact me on Twitter. I love answering producer questions on a daily basis. So it's at LaidbackLuke and I'll be hearing from you soon. Did you try this cookie, Luke? Huh? Homemade cookie. Mm -hmm. Okay. Today when we get to soundcheck, me and Justin, the promoter, called me and said, listen, is Luke doing Kung Fu or something? I said, yes, why? Because some of the employees from the event, they were driving and they saw someone lost on the hills doing this Kung Fu thing. Look, so they stopped and they were amazing. Had a standard great little nap. And I haven't been on my USB too much, but in the back of my mind, I've been thinking what to play uh, for tonight. So apparently they've been waiting three years to book me and they know every track I've ever made. So I think I'll be playing a lot of my older stuff tonight and curious to see how they rock this at Azores Island. Let's go. They say it's gonna rain hard, so if we can start the set earlier, we'll be perfect. So the Janon is the grass, the screener in the other tent. probably the most enthusiastic crowd of Portugal I've ever seen. They were very thankful and they kept on partying um, even when it was raining. Big weekend coming up. It'll be Mysteryland the Netherlands and Creamfields UK on one day and then after I'll be in Ibiza for Dimitri Vegas and like Mike. All gonna be in the next vlog so I hope you'll check back into it. It's a true story and the real life. Until then, 